Welcome to the television broadcast of the Grace Chapel AME Church. For the next 60 minutes, tune in and enjoy the best in singing, preaching, praying, and teaching God's Word. This program is dedicated especially to those who are sick, shed in, prison bound, or just can't get to church. Come on in and join us Monday through Wednesday, 9 to 10 a.m. mornings, 3 to 4 afternoons, and 9 to 10 p.m. nights. Sit back and enjoy yourselves. Hope you like it. God bless you all. You can also see our full-length sermons and videos. Just log on to our official website, gracechapelamechurch.org. Thank you. Welcome to the Outreach Ministry of the Grace Chapel AME Church, located at 1575 Air Colby Trestle Road, off Highway 11 at Interstate 20, where the Reverend C.F. Stembridge Sr. is pastor. Now, let's go in and meet the pastor. Everybody. Yes. 
You know, there's so many people who like to say good morning this morning. But they can't say it. So many people were here last week this time. And you call their name and they'll fail to answer. But look what God did for all of us. He woke us up this morning. In our right mind. And before I go too far this morning, I'd like to say thank you for bringing us together one more time. One more time. All right. Yes, sir. It's not because we all have been so good, but with his will to bring us back together. Our Heavenly Father, I'm calling on you this morning for myself. Because I realize that we can't do nothing without you. Yeah. I need you in the morning, in the evening, and at night. Yes, sir. I'm trying to say I need you 24 hours a day. Yeah. We run into all kinds of trials and tribulations now. Well, well. Sometimes we can't see it before it hit us. But Father, we need you more now than we ever have. I could have said the same thing last month this time. But I feel like it was for now and it was last month. Yeah. But I believe this morning, I really believe that we can just keep on praying. Yeah. 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 Keep on, on, keep on calling your name. Yeah. I believe that you're coming to us one day. It's not going to be this afternoon. It's not going to be tomorrow. But I believe you come. We need you in this generation now. Oh, yes. This is a brand new, brand new generation. But I'm so glad this morning. Use the same God that were here last generation and you here this generation. But Father, we're going to have to learn how to call your name in this generation. You said so. We 
just call your name and call it right. You make everything all right. And I believe that this moment. Father, I'm so glad that that I'm able to stand right here this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning, you've been so good to me and my family. We need you. And I'm not ashamed to tell you we need you bad too. In the name of Jesus this morning, we pray for everybody. The sound of my weak voice for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. shall continue in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked upon him, and they were like, and their face was not ashamed. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of his trouble. Yeah. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that feared him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Yes, Let me read that one more time, that last verse. I said, oh, taste and see yeah. that the Lord yeah. is good. Yeah. Yeah. Blessed is the man yeah. that trusts in him. Yeah. I have read Psalm chapter th 34, verses 1 through 8. Amen. Yeah. 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 I want to thank Brother Tuggle for that wonderful prayer. Yeah. And thank Brother James Reed for the scripture. At this time, we'll have a moment in black history by Courtney Farley. And after that, we will have a presentation by Brother Matthews. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We have Carter Woodson. Carter G. Woodson was an American historian, author, journalist, and the founder of Black History Month. He launched the celebration of Negro History Week in 1926. He designated, for, he designated for the second week in February to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. In 1976, 50 years after his dream, African American history was expanded to Black History Month by President Gerald Ford. Uh, he forced all Americans to honor and celebrate the accomplishments of Black Americans uh, during this month in Black History. Thank you all. <laughs> At this time, we will have a song by Brother Walter Reed, and after the song, we will hear from our very own Reverend Charlie Frank Stembridge as he brings us the message. Then we will have a song by Brother Marshall Parks. <laughs>
the 11th chapter start reading at the 28th verse Amen. the book of Matthew the 11th chapter read the start reading from the 28th verse Jesus know that what I just said, we all get a little tired. That's right, that's right. You'll find Jesus saying these words. Go ahead, bro. He said, come unto me, mm -hmm. all ye that labor in heavy labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke it is, and my burden is light. From that 28th verse, you'll find our message for today. Come unto me. All ye that labor in a heavy late, and I will give you rest. Want to talk for a few moments today. When you become tired, you can go to Jesus. When you become tired, you can go to Jesus. Look at somebody on the other side and tell them you can find rest with Jesus. Yes, sir. I summer today found in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verses. When you look at this text, you find this text with words spoken by Jesus. That's right. Jesus was saying, Whosoever is tired, you can come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This text here is saying to us, as we break it down, when you become tired, you can go to Jesus. And when you go to Jesus, you can find Rest. Yeah. Jesus did not say, go nowhere else to find rest. Jesus did not say, just a few, you come to me and find rest. Jesus didn't say you had to be a certain kind of person to come to him and find rest. All right, all right. But you'll find in this text here, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and have a and I will give you rest. Jesus used the word all. All have many meanings. All mean everybody. All mean the whole crowd. All mean every person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All mean when you are tired. Yes, you are part of the all. All right. When you are tired, you can also come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when you come to Jesus, Jesus will give you rest. Yes, sir. Lord Jesus took time and thought about it and said, he said, come unto me. Mm -hmm. All ye that Labor in heaven late. Yes, sir. And I will give you rest. Yes, yes. Reverend here, Jesus was talking about yes, everybody. Yes. Everybody. everybody. Before we go any further with our son today, let's look at the word labor. Let's look at the word laden and then we'll look at the word rest. Well, well. Labor means work. Well, that's labor means when you work long and hard. Oh, yes, sir. Work means when you toss, task, task, you're working. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. like crying out of the ears and they got a lot of tags on them because they are working. Yeah, they're working. Labor means you are working sometimes hard yes, when you sir. just don't want to work, but labor means yes, to work. Yes, sir. Now, labor means loading. Lay me burden. Lay me when you await. The text said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. Heavy laden means when you are overloaded. Overload. Trying to carry too much. Heavy laden means when you are heavy burden. You're overburdened. You're burdened down. Can't hardly go. Nobody even sang a song down home where me and Brother Tucker come from. They come to church dragging with that heavy burden. So I sing that song and get happy and say, my, put my burden down. Oh, yeah. Song look back and wake the eyes and say, my lay it down. Yes, burden and yes, God too heavy. Yes, now when you laboring and burden, Jesus know when you are laboring. He know when you are heavy laboring. That's why he don't mind looking to you and say, come unto me. Yes, All you that labor in heaven labor. And I will give you rest. Amen. Now, I love that word rest. Yes. I don't care how tough you are and how much you want to run and rip. All of us get tired and rubber here say, we need some rest. Yes. Rest means no work. I like that. <laughs> Rest means we are not doing anything. Yes, yes. yes. Rest means when you are asleep. Yes. <laughs> you can't wait while you're asleep. Yes. Rest means when you are at ease, when you're not worried. All right. It's a good thing to tell people that wild and running and jumping and just rushing the daughter get some rest. Rest means when you're not tired anymore. Yes. So what Jesus said there to take when you're running and ripping and can't hardly go, come unto me. Mm -hmm. All you that labor in heavy laden and I give you rest. rest. You'll find in the Bible that every now and then God had to tell some people, come to me and, and I give you rest. Yes. In the books of Exodus, the 33rd chapter, 12 through the 14th verse, oh Moses was laboring with a heavy laden. Moses was trying to carry the children of Egypt, Israel, through the wilderness. All right. right. And them Israelites, mm -hmm. they had been gotten hard headed, yes. stubborn, mm -hmm. stiff legged, mm -hmm. moaning and groaning. They want to stop. They want to do it. They want to do it. Moses couldn't carry them or lead them in the foot. Moses went to God and said, God, Lord, you told me to lead these people to, to the promised land, but I'm laboring. I got a heavy laden on me. I can't get in and do nothing no more. The Lord said, Moses said, well, just take it easy. I'm glad you came to me because now I go with you and yeah. I give you rest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Every now and then, God, know when you're tired of here, tell you come to me and I give you rest. Yeah. When the old prophet Elijah had enough nerve to stand up before King Ahab, yeah. reached way down in his soul and said, King, the Spirit of God told me to tell you, you just evil and wicked and doing the wrong thing, but he had given me enough power in me. I'm going to shut up hell. Mm. Right. None of your animals are going to have any drink around here for the next few years. And before King Ahab can get up off his throne and tell the man to grab Elijah, God told Elijah, run and hide behind the brook. Yeah. I know you'll be tired when you get out there, I'll be waiting for you. Yes, sir. You can drink water from the brook and I feed you food from the raven bird. Yes. No matter where you be at, God told Elijah, I'll be with you and I will give you 
your rest. Well, well. In the book of Jeremiah, it's all right. Second chapter in the second verse, yeah. God told the people how to find rest. Yes. I wish somebody today was uh, listening long enough for God to tell them how to find rest. Yeah. But I'm mad at people now most scared to drive on the expressway. Yeah. Through ways in the byways. Yeah. Everybody wrestling. Mm -hmm. Can't blow your horn. You can't do nothing there. They want to shoot you. want to do all these because they're wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. They had learned how, they forgot how, but trouble to find rest. Yeah. But in Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, in the sixth verse, yeah, I want everybody to learn that verse and learn them how to find rest. Yeah. The Lord told his people, said, Go to the crossroad and look. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Don't go left or right, but just look. Yes. Yes. You'll see things going both ways, but look. Yes. Then ask for the old way. Yes. Ask for the old path. Yes. <laughs> Do we need now the old way? Yes. When people know which way to go. Yes. What way the old path lead? Uh -huh. How what way the old path will take you? See, they didn't know the old path would take you back to God. Yeah. And when you go back to God, then no matter how tired you are, you can find rest with the Lord. Yeah. So in here, he's saying, Jesus saying, and I take the day. I know you get tired, but come unto me and rest. Yeah. Come unto me, all you that labor in heaven laden, and I give you rest. Yeah. Jesus know there is no other way to rest but by him. Mm -hmm. No other way to rest but with him. Jesus said in John the 15th chapter in the fifth verse, hey, would that mean you can do nothing? Yes, you can't rest without Jesus. Yes. Right. A lot of folks, Reverend here, Reverend Chapman, and Evangelist, they try to rest without Jesus. Yes. Well, I want to tell you that you can't rest without Jesus. Yeah. Jesus knows. He knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah. Jesus knows a whole lot of folks are trying to go to other places to find rest. But you can't find rest unless you find it with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus knows that. I might as well tell you that some of you is not you in heaven. He know that some people are trying to find the rest in Satan, the old devil. No, no, no. You can't find no rest in Satan. No. Jesus know you can't find rest in Satan because you know what? Satan don't have nowhere to rest himself. Luke 11, chapter the 24 through the 26 verse says, when that evil spirit, when Satan goes out, out of you, mm -hmm. out of a person, out of a building, so he goes across dry land, going everywhere, trying to find rest. Yes. But no matter how far he goes, he can't find no rest. Mm -hmm. said, and, oh, Satan did like the prophet's son did, start talking to himself. All right. All right. I'm tired. Don't you know some folks do that? Yes, sir. Take the step on your toe, but you, you ought to learn how to have rest at home. You can't find rest nowhere, then you're going to come into the same place trying to find rest. Oh, Satan thought he had it made. But the tuckers hit him with like that because Louis had to say that he, he got it made. They tired. Out there looking all over dry land, he get that wet stuff, water, he think he get baptized. But the Bible says he's looking for dry land. <laughs> he don't want me saved, this them bread, like a whole lot of folk don't. He don't want me saved. Looking on dry land, but Tucker said, I go back to where I was. <laughs> but when he came back to this tortury, guess what happened? He said he found his house clean, swept, and gone. Yeah. Right. 
Can't buy no rest in a clean house in this minute. You gotta have love in your house. You gotta have peace in your house. That house was swept clean when that man he couldn't find no rest. Cross the lady. Call seven of his bad boys. Come over here. They came over there, and when they got over there, get what? They couldn't find no rest. So I wanna tell you today, no matter how tired you get, don't try to go to sleep. They can't find rest for itself. But if you come to Jesus, you can find rest with Jesus. I like that what he said about that, but when he said that, I like how Jesus, as the Satan find no rest, I like what Jesus said. He said, come unto me. Labor and heavy laden. And I a give you rest. You can find rest with Jesus. Jesus stopped in that 28 verse. Jesus kept on speaking. And I like what he said in the 29th verse. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I let it get happy then. I got with the law, we had a good time, man. I said, you got to be from the country to know about a yoke. You got to grow up on a farm where they had mules and cows. And how to know about a yoke? So I don't know what a, a yoke is. But I know what a yoke is. I was on the farm. A yoke is a wooden frame thing, but cloth built to go in there with the neck of an auction or a Duncan. Then uh, you got something to put two of them together and make two, two of them to one. Connect them together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got a yoke on his own yoke neck and one on his neck. And you connect them together. When they're together, they can pull us stronger together. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But y'all hear what I said? Yes, sir. Uh, when you take two yokes and hook them together on two animals the same, oh, walking right. side by side, right. they can pull that load more easily. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's why the old days on head now say so when you get married, uh -huh. you equal yoke. When you eat a yoke, can I preach for you? When you eat a yoke, your household will go smooth. Husband and wife work together, eat a yoke. Eat a yoke in the field when you got two animals, the same, two donkeys or two options, yoked up together, the wagon to pull a little easy. The big cloud, they can pull it a little easy. But well, then, in the biblical days, and as time went by and slave, they made yoke for a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Free a slave, they had, they had yoke made for man. Yeah. Made out of wooden yoke, put around his neck, on his shoulder. Right. It had some hanging off his shoulder, it hanging down. Yes, sir. Man yoke was a little different from animal yoke. Animal had two of them hooked together, but man had one yoke with two paws by itself. Uh -huh. Hanging down on both sides. Yes, sir. What was man yoke for? Yes. Man yoke for to carry a double load. Uh -huh. All right. Instead of every chapter carrying one block, you can carry two blocks. Uh -huh. Put one on both sides. Yes, and when you got them double load on your shoulder, even now and then them things get extremely heavy. Yeah. Double load on, double load on your shoulder. Oh. When Jesus said, take my yoke, a yoke got to fit good on something. Yes. It got to fit good on an animal, I got to fit good on a person. Yeah, yeah. Your yoke made to fit nobody but you. When your yoke fit good on you, you can carry your load better. It'll be much easier when your yoke fit you. That's why everybody need to have their own yoke. Yes, sir. When your yoke don't fit you, when you walk around with grab the yoke, don't know who yoke you got, when it's too big or too small, too loose or too tight, yeah, right. then it's gonna make the load heavy. Yeah, 
A rope that don't fit, a yoke don't fit good on an animal, gonna put soles on it. Mm. He's gonna put soles on your back, you know what he's gonna make you do? Mm. Gonna make you tired. Right. Right. You got soles on, he's gonna make you jump. Mm. He's gonna make you mean. Yeah. He make you quick temper. Mm. Yeah. When you see folks zip, zip, zapping in and out of the spread way, they got on the wrong yoke. Mm. Yeah. When you see somebody even if talk back too quick, mm. the wrong yoke. Yeah. You need to have them on the right you. Yes. I heard Jesus said here, take my you. Yes. Jesus know that his you with fish. Right. He can't study Jesus with nobody else you. Well. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn yes. of me. Yes. Have mercy. Yes. You had Jesus yoke on you, you can learn from Jesus. Yes, you can just look how Jesus looked how when you got the yoke on your yoke with Jesus, you connect it with Jesus. Yes. When you connect it with Jesus, your life will get better. Yes. When you connect it with Jesus, you'll walk right. Yes. You'll talk right. Yes. You'll act right. Yes. You'll do right. Yes. You'll need to keep one about John to tell you that you'll learn how to be right. Yes. If you connect it with Jesus. Take my yoke upon you yeah. and learn of me. Yeah. They had was in the old days. Yeah. They didn't have much, but they had the yoke with Jesus. Yeah. They learned how to learn from Jesus, how to live the good life. All right. Jesus said, you do that then, he'll, he'll find out a little bit about me. Yeah. Once you got your yoke with my yoke, you'll find out that I'm meek and I'm yeah. Lowly in spirit. Yeah. I ain't hot about it, but I can get along with yeah. everybody if you learn, learn learn who Jesus is. Yeah. He said, I'm humble. Then he said, You can learn how to just live a good life. Yeah. Yeah. Then finally, what I like about Jesus, the way he said was, You take my yoke because my yoke, it is. In my prayer, in life. Yeah. I don't know why you want to go around the world here, struggling and straining like the candy field said, struggling and straining, but learn how yes. to take Jesus you. Yes. Yes. His yoke is easy. In the burden in life. Yes. Yes. Lady came to the well one day, heavy a burden. Yes. But they met Jesus at the well. Yes, he did. Met Jesus at the way of Jesus changed her life. Yes. Yes. Gave her the right yoke. Yes. Took the burden off of her. Yes. They were talking about her, calling her low life, but when Jesus got through, the lady was light. Yes. Left there running, going back to tell everybody, come see a man. Yes. He gave me the right yoke. Yes, sir. Jesus walked there one day by the Bethesda in the pool. Yes, the man had been there for a long time. Oh, yes. Jesus looked at the man and said, Have you been here a long time? I believe you got on the wrong yoke. Yes. Yes. The man said, If they ain't too big, because every time I get ready to, uh -huh. somebody yes. else beat me in the wall. Yes. Oh, yeah. Jesus gave him the right yoke. Yes. Lighten his burden. Yes. Told him to take up his bed. Yes. And the man began to walk. Yeah. One day Jesus uh, met the woman, the woman uh, with the issue of uh, blue. Yeah, yeah. Going everywhere trying to get well. Yeah. Oh Lord, she had to meet Jesus one day. Yeah. Jesus gave her the right yoke. Yeah. Some of the blood from floating. Yeah. Lighting her burden. Yeah. And the woman was all right. Oh, and I get ready to close in a day. I got news for you. Yeah. You can do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what makes you tired all the time. Yeah. I don't know how your yoke fit on your neck. Yeah. But I'll tell you how you can handle it. Uh -huh. I don't know whether your yoke is too big. I don't know whether it's too small. Uh -huh. I don't know whether it's too tight. I don't know whether it's too loose. Yeah. But you want to find rest with the Lord. Yeah. I dare you. I double dare you. To go down. Take it down on your knees. Take it 
stay down on your knees long enough, Jesus will hear from you. And you will know when Jesus will hear from you, and then you will start talking right to Jesus. If you do the old song, say, you can tell Jesus all about your trouble. And you hear you sing that song, say, I'm going to tell Jesus about my trouble. You can't tell him unless you connect that with Jesus. You can tell Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I'm labeling. And I got a heavy laden on my shoulder. You can tell him, I'm tired. I need a little help. But Jesus is going to look at you with a smile. You didn't came and told me you were trouble. You didn't told me what's wrong with you now. You didn't told me what you want me to do for you now. With Jesus. Yes, yes, in the old days, when I was growing up, when men got tired, working all week, saw Bill and Pookwood, they thought by going by the nip house, getting them a good nip. Yes, they can get some rest. Yes. They didn't get no rest, they got a little bit of leaf. Yeah. But the tiredness would be a death. The only way to get their relief was, you got to move over a little further. Go to one of them buildings, we got a steeple on there called a church. What you go in that church on a Sunday morning, but show a green. And so I talk to the Lord. Then you were able to find rest. One last time, when you're tired, stop running. Satan can't help you. He can't find no rest himself. Say he wants you to find, get some rest. He want to rest on you. But don't worry about that. When you're tired, go to Jesus. And when you go to Jesus, he's going to tell you, come unto me. All you that labor in heaven labor, then I will give you rest. You got on the wrong work stuff to work with, take my yoke and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly and hard. And I give you rest to your soul. But then the last word, first number 30 said, my yoke it is. It ain't hard to put on this brown, it is. And my burden is light. When you put on clothes, you take about 10 men to pull them up. They ain't fit. Buy your son to sit. Like Brother Matthew just did with these two coats. He fit these guys well. They must have got the side of them bread because he said, My yoke it is. My bread is like. Come on, Brother Paul. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, I'm waiting. Yes, I am. Right. I yes, I'm waiting.
Had a good time here today on this first Sunday. Enjoy the time when everybody is on one accord and enjoying the service. From the beginning, I would worship leader all the way down to earth and choir was singing. Reverend here, Brother Paul, put some juice to that thing. He ain't gonna walk today. We ain't the mayor choir no many, but both of them right there just floating on out. Let's play song, bro. Walk you gave it all you got, 110 percent. Then we eat. Yeah. Then, bro, Paul came back and icing the cake. Thank you all so much. They always tease that musician back there and that drummer. They just doing a wonderful job. And uh, thank Miss Stembridge again, who and brother Paul and brother uh, Pitch for the theme and our program on Sunday. Thank you, Sister Steve Reed, for coming down here today to be with us. Yeah. Paul was on standby, but he's still to be working and getting together. Yeah. We're going to get ready to close out. Anything you want to say for you, fine. Yeah. 